I'm delighted to welcome both to the show today. Siobhan, I'm going to start with you. Um, tell me how you first started working with Bryony. So Pancreatic Cancer UK did a campaign day and involved um, MPs from across the house to try and tell us about the, a drug called PERT, uh, which is not, it's not, it's not, um, it's not given out enough uh, as far as we're concerned for people who are suffering from pancreatic cancer or who are, have survived it. So they wanted to raise awareness and within that they, they brought me in touch with my constituent Bryony, who as you will see in a moment is a complete inspiration. I was totally gripped uh, by her story to a point where I didn't, I didn't want to stop the conversation. So on a personal level, Bryony and I are a similar age. We're mums, you know, and, and I had actually no idea. I'd always, always thought that pancreatic cancer was very much an older person's uh, mm. I I issue. So that, that really upset me, and I started investigating. And then on a professional level, this is a cancer that's con it's, it's known as the silent cancer. Uh, there hasn't been improvement in survival rates for 40 years. Um, so I've raised the, uh, raised the issue in the House uh, with the leader of the House, Jacob Rees-Mogg. He actually encouraged us to campaign on this, so that's what we're doing. Good. Brian, tell me about the moment that you were diagnosed in 2019 and how that conversation went about your prognosis. Yeah, well, like um, half of pancreatic cancer patients, I ended up being diagnosed on acute admission to hospital, even though I'd been going to see my GP with vague symptoms for five years. On the day that I was diagnosed, I'd been there for four days. I was going increasingly yellow, um, looked like Marge Simpson, um, trying to keep up my sense of humour. And um, the doctor came in with two women I didn't recognise. One had a purple uniform on and my stomach sank. My husband was with them and Dr Griffiths says, we've found, we found a mass in your pancreas. We think it's cancer and it might be operable. And it was the word might. Right. And I swore and I said, that's the one you don't want, isn't it? Yeah. And um, my husband and I looked at each other and we, the thing is, we weren't surprised. You know, the, uh, the Spike Milligan, I told you I was ill. I told you I was ill. You know, for five years, I'd been to my GP with fatigue, with bloating, with, um, with kind of just low-level lethargy and lack of vitality, um, all sorts of these small issues that didn't get added up into cancer. Goodness me. Goodness me. The good news is you are still here. Yes. Tell us why. Well, I'm one of the only one in 10 people who are offered potentially curative surgery. By the time most people get um, to the point of being diagnosed, it's too late. And there is a reason for that. That This was the size of my tumour when I was operated on. Walnut. Your whole a walnut. And this is, um, if this were on your body, you'd feel it. When it's in your body, you don't. Right. It can, this would have been there for nearly seven years before I was diagnosed. And so because you can't feel it, you need to be alert to small symptoms, things like looking into the toilet. You can't feel your breasts, uh, you can't yeah. feel it on your testes. What you can do is look in the toilet and understand what your poo should look like. Right, uh, what are the warning signs? Um, pale floating poo. Right. So peanut butter coloured or lighter, right. you've got a problem. Doesn't flush away, you've got a problem. And so yeah. if that happens regularly and for more than two weeks, see your doctor. And if it persists, you persist too. What we found is, unfortunately, even some doctors don't like to talk about poo. They'll talk about sort of tummy troubles or yeah. stool and, you know, and actually language that doesn't really get to the nub of the issue or ask the right questions. I'm actually the perfect MP for Bryony. I've got a toddler. You know, <laughs> when, you are, when you have a baby, you're taught to look at wheeze and poos and, and actually it's an indication of health. But as we grow up, that, that isn't. So it, it's going to be part of the awareness raising. It might be uncomfortable for some people, but it is going to be part of, uh, of what Bryony is trying to achieve with telling people about the symptoms.